company a money and it is simply providing providing that money to the purchaser from where it is acquiring that asset fine okay now section d122 section d122 that deals with rates of return in short rr rates of return and mind you these two sections risk risk free rr and rate uh, and risk adjusted rr these two these two sections 20 paragraphs they are 20 paragraphs these two sections they are new addition into the 2022 guidelines they were not present in the original 2017 guidelines these 20 paragraphs were released in february 2020 along with chapter 10 on tp aspects of financial transaction so do these 20 paragraphs plus chapter 10 on financial transaction those these two have now been formally incorporated into 2022 guidelines fine so those of you who would be thinking that why do we need to do 27 2022 this is the this is this is precisely the reason because in any case 2070 did not contain those these two additions so you would have to do them anyway fine okay so rates of return and one more thing this this concept of risk free rates of return and risk adjusted rate of return that is also very important for chapter 10 financial transactions right because when you will when you will deal with intra group financial transaction for example loans hedging guarantees you will find that ultimately you are when you are going to price those transaction you will have to you will have to find out uh, what should be the rates of return and this is precisely the, precisely the reason why risk free r1 and rate uh, risk adjusted rr was released along with the financial transaction because these are related fine so r1 rate of return r1 rate of return r1 rate of return two types risk free risk free and risk adjusted risk and adjusted <coughs> risk free and risk adjusted fine i'll give you the framework risk free and risk adjusted now risk free rate of return and risk adjusted rate of return this one is risk risk free rate of return is dealt by section d1221 and risk adjusted is dealt subsequently d1222 fine simply said risk free rate of return is that rate of return A risk free rate of return is that rate of return which any funder What is what's what's a funder? Who provides funds? Funder, funding. Who provides funds? Risk-free rate of return is the rate of return which any funder will will get, will be entitled to if he does not exercise control over the risk, control over the financial risk. Fine. I'll repeat. Risk-free rate of return is the return which. which any funder will get who does not exercise control over the financial risk so can we say that in this example a b and c this is the funding transaction this was the funding transaction fine and in this funding transaction funding was done by a and we just now saw that as per the framework acf a did not exercise control over the financial risk so that is why in this case a being the funder a being the funder providing the funding because he does not exercise control over the financial risk investment risk because he does not have the capability because he does not actually perform the control function that is why he does not exercise control over the financial risk and that is why he will be entitled to only a risk free rate of return risk free rate of return if you look at the definition and tell you the paragraphs a risk free rate of return is simply that rate of return <coughs> which any party any associated entity any associated entity will be entitled to if the risk on that party is nil is zero ideally speaking should be zero obviously risk in any transaction can never be equal to zero but risk free rate of return virtually means that the risk is almost next to zero close to zero is it fine so in this case the 
A will be entitled to a risk free rate of return. Fine. Further moving. Okay. So this is the concept of risk free rate of return. Now, now the question is risk free rate of return almost zero risk. See, the point is how do we calculate the risk free rate of return? How do we calculate the risk free rate of return? I am telling you. You know every government in the world, every government in the world, India, US, Sri Lanka, China, all the governments, every government, every country in the world, every government in the world, they come out with sovereign bonds in the bond market. Every country in the world, every government in the world, they come out with the sovereign bonds. And depending upon the nation, depending depending upon the financial stability and reputation of the nation, all these sovereign bonds, they carry a certain return and better any better the country's reputation better the country's overall reputation yes better the country's overall reputation better the country's strength better the country's overall stature lower will be the rate of return on its securities for example us government's treasury securities us government bonds they carry a very low rate of return why because we know that us is is i mean de facto the almost only superpower the most powerful country in the world at least as of now so that is why there is almost a zero risk of loss on the securities so that is why whatever government bonds the us will release they will carry a very 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 low rate of return and that can be taken as a risk free rate of return contrary to this if sri lanka if sri lanka were to come up with a sovereign bond so what do you think the the rate of return on the sri lanka sovereign bond would be higher than the us or lower everyone rate of return on sri lanka's bond will be higher than us or lower than us government security bond please everyone higher higher deepak and abdul yes sir It will be higher. Why? Because the risk, because the risk of default in case of Sri Lanka is very very high. Is it clear? So government securities rate of returns on government securities, corporate uh, government securities, government bonds, they are the best reference rates for determining the rate of return. Fine. Number one. So return on government securities. We normally uh, short form is G S X. Government securities. So one. this this you can refer to government securities this could be one of the reference rates for finding out the risk free rate of return another could be another could be interbank rates where central banks or big banks they 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 transact between themselves so interbank rates could also be one of the reference for finding out the risk free rate of return why because if one bank will provide fund to the another bank then it would be known that the bank which is taking my fund is it's a safe bank it's not going to default so ultimately if i'm providing the funds to it i won't get a very high return it's, it's simply for money market operations right so normally government interbank then then you have repurchase rates swap rates so all these all these rates can be used for finding out the risk free rates of return now mind you there is one concept that whenever because there are possibilities because it's a new edition and the question might appear in the examination the only thing that you have to keep in mind the only thing that you have to keep in mind is risk free rate of return will be the lowest rate of return under the given circumstances and how would you find the rate of return how would you find the lowest rate of return with the help of credit rating credit rating you must have heard about standard and poors S&P, Fitch, Moody rating, they they devalue a country's rating A A A, B B B, B small A A. Have you have you heard these terms, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So these are these are these are standard stand. These are huge consultants, and they rate they rate they rate country they rate companies. So higher the letter. In fact, there are tables. There are tables. I'm not going to create those tables because I don't have that. uh you can get those tables they are in the domain but then simply said a triple a rating 
a triple a rating is the highest grade rating for example compared to this a d d rating will be the lowest and then you you will have double a rating or a rating then uh, b b b plus then b b and so on you must have seen so this is the highest credit rating credit rating highest credit rating and this would be the lowest highest credit rating lowest credit rating so which will have the highest rate of return everyone this is the highest credit rating and this is the lowest credit rating so which of these two triple a and d which of these two will be having the highest rate of return and which will have the lowest rate of return everyone so a and d would be the lowest exactly a will be the lowest rate of return so are these it clear a a a will be the lowest rate of return why because in this case the risk of default is the minimum yes a a will be the will be having the lowest rate of return why because in this case the risk of default is minimum whereas d d d will have to sri lanka probably rating would be d and if it comes out with the bonds then in that case the risk of default will be the highest that is why if sri lanka wants to gain money out of the market it will have to provide a very high rate of return is it clear so whenever any example comes where where you are to find out where you, where you are to find out the lowest uh, lowest rate of return the risk free rate of return out of all these you have to look at that rating that rating which is the highest and highest credit rating you can note this highest credit highest credit rating highest credit rating will be equivalent to lowest rate of return which will be equal to which is almost equal to risk free rate of return i i believe it should be clear is it clear highest credit rating lowest rate of return that is equal to risk free rate of return is it clear so this is all about this is all about risk free rate of return